Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. We are gonna create a quick mouse follow behavior. We're gonna have the dot follow where the mouse is. Now to get the mouse position, it's actually one of the plugins that's built into Pixie.js. So the mouse position changes as you move around the screen. So let's go ahead and get a function to get it since it changes every time. Can't really set it to a variable and keep it around because it changes. So we'll make a function to get it for two reasons. A, because it changes and three, because it's a deeply nested object and we don't have to type that every single time. So we'll create an arrow function here and we'll start on our app, which is our Pixie application. But instead of going to stage, we're gonna go to something called renderer. Renderer is either A, a WebGL renderer, or B, a canvas renderer. If you're on a newer computer or a newer iPhone or Android or Samsung device, you're probably gonna have a WebGL generator. That's a hardware accelerated renderer, it renders the 2D pixels on your screen as fast as possible using hardware. If you're on an older device, it'll be Canvas. Good news is that it has the same API for the most part. So you just say renderer and don't really care which one it is. Plugins are things that are beyond just Pixies. Pixie.js is around building 2D really interactive experiences, but the interaction has to do with the mouse and keyboard. That's a completely separate set of code than rendering things on the screen. So they put it in plugins for people to extend it with other interaction models. So we go to plugins. And interaction is what handles all the interactions from mouse, keyboards, what have you. On there is mouse. That mouse is where our mouse information is. And the particular piece we're interested in is global. That's globally on the screen, on the stage, where is it? So it's relative to the actual root stage. This is going to give us an object with the X and Y value. Let's print that out since that was quite the mouthful. I'm not going to even get an object for us. I'm just going to print it raw. And if you refresh the screen here, you'll see these numbers down here, this X and Y position. And as I move my cursor across the screen, you'll see those values update. So if I go to the very top, it'll be negative or zero. If I go far to the right, but don't go down, you'll see that the X increases, but the Y stays the same. And if I go down, the Y increases and the X stays the same. That is the mouse position globally, and it changes every time you move your mouse. You can check that value when you go into something like a ticker, which runs as fast as possible. Now that we have the mouse position, we can say, all right, let's get it every single time. Mouse position equals get mouse position. And let's make this a let variable since it changes all the time. Lastly, we say dat dot x equal where the mouse is right now. Dat dot, same for the y. As fast as possible, the dot will try to be as exactly where the cursor is on the screen. Notice that there is some latency and that the cursor moves faster than the circle does. If we move really fast, it'll draw it as best it can and drop some frames. But if you move it really slow, it's nice and smooth. And if you don't move, it doesn't move. That is the basic mouse follow behavior using one of the plugins for interaction, specifically mouse, and where it is on the screen. We capture that X and Y value, set the circle dot to where those mouse positions are.